You didn't think for a minute that I wouldn't be building a crosscut saw vise, did you? So you can see here, beautiful piece of Douglas fir. Got a flat edge here, the chainsaw milled both ends. You can see, and I'm gonna square up this corner here first, start pulling my dimensions here. Uh, we'll cut this and get our layout done. So I've got this timber cut to seven foot four. Uh, the reason for that length is I'm not going to, or I don't want to saw over uh, seven foot. And so that's gonna give me four inches a little extra on each, on each side. So I'm gonna use Wanda here to determine this, help me determine the radius to cut uh, for the clamp. So determining the radius on this crosscut saw vise uh, was challenging because I've got a seven foot four overall piece and Wanda was only six and a half feet. So I had to kind of improvise here. So what I did is I found center, uh, which is eight inches. And then of course on the end here, we have five inches and I put to little brass brads, you can use little nails at five inches, at six and a half, which is right in the center, and at eight. And I took my most flexible flatback saw, which is uh, Megan, and laid her on there and put pins front and back. You can see, can you? You can see right there, front and back to hold her into place, and then drew that radius. So if I, you can see there, I've got a nice clean radius. It's a big radius. I don't know how many feet it is, probably 40 feet or so if you uh, completed it to, a, or drew, drew it to a complete circle. Too big for me to measure with anything. So if the truth be told, that first method did not work very good. I think there was a serious flaw in my math here somewhere in the middle. So what I have uh, uh, switched to is a piece of flexible one inch PVC pipe. And I've marked here, five, at eight in the center, and again five on the other side. And I seem to have a more true radius. Look at the Look at the difference there. I think that this is a, I think this is a better method. No question about it. The pipe method is better. We have a true radius here, instead of straight lines. For now, I've got to solve the problem as for how to cut the wicked thing. So my initial idea to carve this radius was uh, I took my saw and I cut every couple inches down here and using my timber framing chisel, knocked it out and I'm pulling this radius down with my draw knife. This is proving to be time consuming to say the least. And the more I look at it, I think I can find a better way. I'm gonna try to take my chainsaw and cut, rough cut this radius and then pull it down to uh, the line with the draw, the draw knife. I should have done that in the first place. That worked really good. This mini mill is so versatile, the mini mill uh, holds it at a true 90 off the top. So I didn't have to try to guess or get all wobbly. And then I had my line right there. I was able to just kind of slide this, uh, use this uh, guide here as a gauge and just follow that line. And that cut went right down there. It was just slick as slick. So I'll pull this uh, smooth with the draw knife now. And I think we're on our way. Yep, the chainsaw was the ticket. So overall, it turned out pretty good. I did have uh, uh, some, some rot uh, in this on the corner, so I had to take them down a little further 
uh, than it would have been uh, had it been you know, perfectly symmetrical. Um, but that's okay. Uh, this was a windfall and it had been down, uh, it had been cut by the unscrupulous loggers before uh, I got here and I caught it just in time. So it cost me nothing and the really thing that really matters is just having uh, one flat side. Right here is where the, the saw is going to be mounted and where we'll put our, our hard, hardwood clips. But uh, I think it's pretty. It's going to age with time. Um, the price was right. It's uh, timber from my own land and I think it's uh, just beautiful.